After the crippling defeat at the Alamo that the Texas revolutionists suffered at the hands of the Mexican president Santa Ana, the follow-up battle proved to be just as devastating. The Battle of Coleto, also known as the Battle of Coleto Creek and the Battle of the Prairie, was a failure due in large part to blunders made by the Texas Army commander James W. Fannin, Jr. When word of the loss that occurred at the Alamo reached Colonel Fannin, he started making poor decisions that put his troops garrisoned at Goliad in jeopardy. General Jose de Urea was advancing with a formidable army of Mexican soldiers through the interior of Texas, and Fannin dispatched two separate groups of his soldiers directly into the path of Urea's advance. This act substantially weakened the Goliad garrison and contributed to the eventual outcome of the impending battle. Fannin knew that the terrible loss at the Alamo had rendered his garrison at Goliad less important strategically, and he received instructions from Sam Houston to withdraw to Victoria to join the rest of the Texas Army. He delayed his retreat from Goliad, waiting on word from the two regiments sent out, to engage and gather intelligence on General Urea's advance. Fannin also argued that the Mexican soldiers were not well trained or disciplined and would not follow his troops, which he considered superior. Finally, at 9 a.m. on the morning of March 19, 1936, Fannin led his men on a leisurely retreat from Goliad. The oxen used to pull his trailers and wagons had not been fed the previous day and were understandably in a cantankerous mood. Also, the soldiers left Goliad with an inadequate supply of food and water. General Urea was unaware of Fannin's retreat until 11 a.m. on the 19th, but soon caught up to him due to some bad luck on the Americans' part and some blunders by Fannin. While crossing the San Antonio River, a cart broke, and a cannon had to be retrieved out of the river. After losing time at the river, Fannin ordered the oxen be allowed to graze for an hour, allowing Urea to catch the Texans. The other officers opposed not continuing on to the timber of Coleto Creek, which would have provided much better cover. Another example of poor decision-making by Colonel Fannin. Urea caught the Texans in a bad spot, open prairie, and at a low spot in the terrain. Colonel Fanning decided to defend his vulnerable position by forming a square by his troops. The Texans repelled several advances by the Mexicans during the first day of the battle and prevented them from breaking any lines of the square. As night fell, Mexican sharpshooters were able to inflict more death and wound more of Fanning's soldiers. Due to the lack of supplies, water, and the inability to care for their wounded, Fanning and his other officers decided that surrender the following morning was their only option. They did sustain one more attack on the 20th before sending word to Urea of the surrender. The Texans requested to be treated with standard prisoner of war procedures. However, even though Urea requested clemency, Santa Ana refused the request. All of the Texans were gathered back in Goliad and on the Palm Sunday, March 27, 1936, Fannin and his soldiers, about 340 overall, were shot by Mexican soldiers. The execution became known as the Goliad Massacre. Even though the Texans had lost two pivotal battles in a row, all was not lost. I will be doing a video on the Battle of San Jacinto in which the fortunes of the fighters for Texas independence turned decisive defeats at the Alamo and Coleto Creek into the ultimate victory. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up, make a comment, and most of all, subscribe to the channel. Subscribers are appreciated as we push toward monetization of this channel. As always, thanks for watching.